Carol King, Tapestry, released April the 10th, 1971. There are times in some artist's career when all their stars are aligned and they reach a peak of creativity. They're right in the groove. Maybe it's just for an album or two and then they might never attain those heights again. Tapestry for me was Carol King's stellar moment. And though she made many albums after Tapestry, none ever reached the dizzying heights of that record. During the 1960s, Carol King and her husband, Jerry Goffin, wrote hit after hit for other artists. They wrote The Locomotion for Little Weaver, Pleasant Valley Sunday for The Monkees, hit songs for Aretha Franklin and Dusty Springfield, amongst many, many others. In the late 60s, Carol's marriage to Goffin broke down and she moved to Laurel Canyon in California where she started to perform her own songs. And all the years of working, perfecting, honing her craft was realised on Tapestry, her second album. This is from Stephen Houseman's Billboard Music Charts, Facts. April the 10th, 1971. 50 years ago today, Carol King debuted on the Billboard 200 charts with her album, Tapestry. No one could have guessed what was to become of this now legendary album. Its lead-off single, It's Too Late, I Feel the Earth Move, didn't debut on the Hot 100 until four weeks later, on May the 8th, 1971. By June the 19th, 1971, the double A-sided single began a five-week run at number one on the Billboard charts. The album began a 15-week run at number one and held the record for the most weeks at number one by a female solo artist for over 25 years until surpassed by Whitney Houston's motion picture soundtrack album, The Bodyguard. Tapestry spent 302 weeks, 10 weeks shy of six years on the Billboard 200 chart. So far, the album's sales have exceeded 25 million copies worldwide. Carol created a soundtrack for our lives back then. The value of friendship, you've got a friend. The power of passion, the funky, I feel the earth move. Loneliness and longing, home again and so far away. Hopes and dreams, will you still love me tomorrow? The sight of Carol walking out in those huge stadiums just her and a grand piano was something amazing and very powerful. So many women I've met over the years have cited Carol King as an inspiration and a reason why they started writing songs. Even after all these years, the album's power, honesty and vulnerability shines through. Beth Gibbons and Rustin Man, Out of Season, from 2002. If ever there was an album that was a perfect soundtrack to autumn, this is it. It's a record you want to put on as the nights draw in, the weather turns colder, a log fire is burning and a bottle of red is there on the table ready to be opened as the wind blows the leaves around outside. Beth Gibbons and Paul Webb aka Rustin Man have together created a beautiful, magical stunner of a record. For it, they draw on the influences of Nina Simone, Billy Holiday, Nick Drake, and the solo work of Sandy Denny. If you've ever been a fan of the work of Nick Drake, Five Leaves Left, Pink Moon, Brighter Later, or the solo work of Sandy Denny, albums like An Old Fashioned Waltz, North Star Grassman and the Raven, then this album is right up your street. Paul Webb has created these wonderful pieces of music which become the perfect backdrop for Beth to weave her vocal magic. And she shows why I believe she's one of the best vocalists Britain has ever produced. Track one, Mysteries, where over just acoustic guitar and Beth's otherworldly multi-track vocals. Like I said, it's Sandy Denny with lyrics that could have been written by Nick Drake. 
when the time bell blows my heart and I have scored a better day, or nobody made this war of mine, and the moments that I enjoy, a place of love and mystery, I'll be there any time. Track 2, Tom the Model, where Miss Gibbons channels her best Nina Simone. It's a song of desolation and despair over a doomed love affair. Swirling organs and a sumptuous horn and string arrangement. It's like a classic torch song from the 1950s or the early 1960s. And Beth Gibbons puts her heart and soul into every moment. If you thought the vocals on track two were great, Beth takes it to another level on track three show which opens with just sultry piano and beth's cracked emotional wobbly vocal this time coming across as billy holiday but it's all just a show a time for us and the words we'll never know and daylight comes and fades with the tide i'm here to stay the atmosphere created here is incredible and it will touch your soul. Track four, Romance. Nina Simone meets Burt Bacharach. So many lovely little nuances, changes of melody, pace. This is pure genius music making. So we're four tracks in, and even though Beth has echoed Sandy Denny, Billie Holiday, and Nina Simone, it doesn't sound like an imitation, a takeoff. She owns this. So that's just the first four tracks. I could do an hour on this album, but I will be doing a full review in the very near future. Next up, Engineu by Katie Lang. The first time I saw Katie, she was on a late night TV show, a late night country music show. She came out and she covered Roy Orbison's Crying. It was a tour de force. Her voice, what a voice. What range, what power, what intensity just blew me off my feet. So the very next day, I went out and bought her latest album, which was Engineer. Lang herself described the album as post-nuclear cabaret or nouveau easy listening. By the way, Ingenue is an innocent or unsophisticated young woman. When Lang came out, and declared her sexuality during the promotional campaign for this album, radio stations stopped playing it. Can you believe that? But she had the last laugh. The album went multi-platinum. Katie has said that the songs describe being in love with someone who's in another relationship, but never has loss, heartbreak and repression sounded so seductive. The album is packed with one great song after another. You have that voice, you have these soaring melodies, your dreamy lush textures and Ben Mink's clean clear production. It's a head spinning concoction. Highlights include The Mind of Love, Where Is Your Head Catherine? Where Is Your Head? Constant Craving, Outside myself, I've been outside myself for so long. Every feeling I had is close to gone. It's a must-have album. Dusty in Memphis by Dusty Springfield, released January 1969. Throughout the 1960s in the UK, Dusty Springfield was the female vocalist. She'd had a string of hit singles and albums, but... By 1968, her music was now thought of as unfashionable. She then signed to Atlantic Records, the home of her idol, Aretha Franklin, in the hope that signing to such a prestigious soul label would further her career and take her more in the direction she wanted to go in, as a soul singer. But at the recording sessions for this album at American Sound in Memphis, she worried constantly about being compared unfavourably to the other soul greats who had recorded in those studios. Hence her vocals were re-recorded in New York. 
When Dusty in Memphis was finally released in January 1969, it was critically well received, though commercially the album only reached number 99 on the Billboard charts. However, today the album is considered one of the great albums of all time. For me, the album perfectly demonstrates Dusty's superb command of timing, flawless delivery and understatement, though when required, she pushes her voice to the limit. She swaggers through Jerry Goffins and Carol King's So Much Love and Don't Forget About Me and other standouts are the two Randy Newman numbers, I Don't Want to Hear It Anymore and Just One Smile. But pretty much the whole album is one great song after another. And if you ever want to hear a singer at the top of her game, Dusty in Memphis is the album to own. Next up, Titanic Rising from 2019 by Wise Blood. I came across Wise Blood, aka Natalie Merring, due to a live performance with Lana Del Rey and Zella Day doing a cover of Joni Mitchell's For Free. And I was entranced by the quality and the power of her vocals, so I decided to check out her last album, which was Titanic Rising. And I'm sure glad I did. What I found was a hugely gifted and original artist and an album of great depth and beauty. And since then, I've seen a good few live performances from Natalie. And not once has she ever sung off key or hit a bum note. Her vocals are impeccable. Titanic Rising was critically well received. All Music praised the record, saying that she underscores enormously orchestrated pop songs with eerie experimental ambience, imagining a dream world where Joni Mitchell's late 1970s output was produced by Brian Eno. Pitchfork described the album as a grand sentimental ode to living and loving in the shadow of doom and her most ambitious and complex work yet while Days Digital stated that pairing a rich 70s soft rock palette with rippling undercurrents of dread, it already feels like one of this year's best records, 2019, and a poignant document on what it feels like to inhabit this particular moment in time. I kind of differ a bit because whereas most of the artists on these selections, on the previous albums that I've just run through, they sing about love, loss, broken relationships. Natalie Merring suggests that with faith, positivity and hard work, all is possible. On the beautiful swirling Andromeda, she sings, love is calling, it's time to let it through. Find a love that will make you, I dare you to try. While every day could be a classic 70s pop song with some Celtic swing, it's fun, jaunty, laden with hooks and melodies and is guaranteed to put a spring in your step. Got a lot of things to clear away. Got a lot of bad luck to make okay. Wise Blood is a great moniker for Miss Merring. She's smart, elegant, intelligent and certainly wise beyond her years. A comparison she doesn't like but it has to be said is Karen Carpenter. She has that same pure effortless vocal delivery she could have easily opted to be one of the myriad of young, bland female artists that clutter up the charts today. But no, I don't think that was ever on the cards for an artist of Miss Merring's talents. Listen to Movies. It's another standout track. Tangerine Dream meets Joni Mitchell over a looped analogue synthesizer as she sings about cinema's illusions and unattainable dreams. The meaning of life doesn't shine like that screen. I want to be in my own movie. It's said that Merring became obsessed with the movie Titanic. The cover of the album shows her in a water-filled bedroom. And maybe the title Titanic Rising means a moving on, a resurrection of childhood hopes and dreams. Titanic Rising is a 10 out of 10 album. And I can't wait for the next instalment in Miss Merring's career. So there you have it, another five great albums by female artists. And 
five albums I do urge you to listen to. And if you get a chance to hear them, please post your comments, your thoughts in the comment section below. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel and stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.